Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Today we're going to work with some ballistic programs. Today it's going to be Ballistic AE. It's the advanced edition. And I'm going to show you how to set up your rifle in it to where you can get pretty consistent numbers at distance and it helps you get a really good dope and how to true that dope. So Ballistic AE is an app for the iPhone and it can be found in the App Store. It's $19.95. It does have a, a ton of options and we're going to go over some of those options here. Uh, so what you're going to do obviously is you open up the app now right now I just put this in here because um, this was the one I was going to use as an example but I'm going to show you how to get to this if you have no idea what your velocity is supposed to be you can start by going through some of the loads that this offers so up at the top here you'll have right here you'll have ballistic coefficient so you click on that and there's bullets there's loads lits which is G um, let's is G7 profiles and then users. So users are the ones that you've already saved. So if you're just clueless on what your feet per second are going to be, we'll go over here to loads. Now I'm going to scroll down to 260 Remington. Now if you look here, you can see that they have some auto select features. That's if you're looking for a new cartridge and you want to know what's best at wind drift, which one's the flattest, which one provides the most energy. Right now we're just going to scroll down and we're going to use the 142 grain Sierra Match King. So what this is, this is a profile for some factory ammo. So I'm just going to select it. So now it's going to populate this area here in the uh, trajectory. So it's going to give you your ballistic coefficient, the bullet diameter, the weight, and the profile that we're going with. This comes with the G1 profile so we're using it. Now right here, if you can notice, it already gives you a feet per second. It gives you a muzzle velocity. One other thing you can do is if you're using this for a lot of profiles, you can put your reloading data in there. Um, you know, Today what we're going to work on is getting this set up for you to get out there and shoot at distance and how to true it. So what you'll start at first is your zero range. Now your zero range is how far you're shooting at for your baseline zero. 100 yards is pretty average. Now if you cannot get your adjustments on your scope to where you are just dead nuts at 100 yards, you can change your zero height here. So you can go in and you can change these numbers and say that I'm 0.25 inches over the you know dead zero that I want to aim at at 100 yards. You're going to measure your sight height if you don't know your sight height, one of the best ways to do it is just measure from where your stock meets your action to the middle of your windage knob. That's That'll get you pretty close. 2.2 uh, inches is pretty common. Now you get your zero atmosphere. Zero atmosphere is if you're zeroing at 600 yards or you know some place where or some distance where the where it makes a difference. At 100 yards it doesn't make a difference as, as far as density altitude goes. But if you zero at 700 yards, 600 yards, that number is going to change based on atmosphere. And then for where you're getting your trajectory, you have your standard atmosphere. Now you can take this off of a Kestrel device or you can push this little button up here and it'll gather it from a weather station. So today it's 96 degrees and the DA is 3269. Now where that comes in is the hotter it gets and the higher elevation you have, your density altitude is higher, which means the air is thinner, which means the bullet can travel flatter. Come down here, we'll have our wind configuration. There's, I have this on the advanced mode, but there's a few different modes. Uh, you can put crosswinds in, all different types of wind. Today I just want to get you set up on the rifle, I just want to show you that option. You put your maximum range. I put 1760 yards, we'll change that. your minimum range. Usually that's where your zero is. Range increment, increment, we'll go to 25 yards, that way we'll get a better understanding and, and view of our uh, dope. And your vital zone radius, that's for hunting, we'll go over that another time. Now here, you want to put in your elevation units, so whatever your scope is calibrated in, if it's inch by 100 yards, if it's MRAD, centimeters per 100 meters, 
quarter minute, half minute, one minute. Mine's MRAD, so we're going to go with MRAD. Same thing with your windage. So now we're going to come down here to spin and stability. When you're out shooting at distance, one thing you'll notice, or you might not notice, is spin drift. Spin drift is when the bullet comes out of the barrel with a right hand twist or left hand twist. It's spinning a certain way, right or left. Eventually, it's slowly going to drift in the direction of that spin. So you can calculate and compensate for that. But what you're going to need is, you're going to need to know the the length of the projectile which that load didn't provide so that's why it's giving it that issue there so you have to give it that first I'm gonna say 1.2 just as a guess now I'm gonna put my twist rate of my rifle and this is important when it comes to the stability factor and when it comes to your spin drift you want to know the twist rate of your rifle mine is a 1 and 8 so I'm just going to put 1 and 8. Actually, I think you can just put 8. There we go. So now we can turn it on, and we can turn stability on. So now we're basically ready to go. We come down here, and you have a wind drift chart, a ballistics chart, trajectory by altitude, by angle. But we want to know is how far out we can shoot and what to adjust for. So I hit Calculate. So we come here, now it gives you your information. You have your BC, your bullet weight, your muzzle velocity, your range. Um, this is how fast before you go below the speed of sound, which changes with your temperature and density altitude. And here's our trajectory. Now if you'll see here in the red, what that is is your maximum point blank range. That means from zero, you can just hold dead on and I had that vital radius at 5 inches, so that means from 0 to 228 inches, I'm not going to drop below that area. And you can change that to whatever you're comfortable with so you know what you can just raise your scope up and hit. Now you see here, in this column, it's telling you the inches, and this is telling you what to adjust in MRAD or MOA or whichever it is that you have on your scope. And it goes all the way down here. To a thousand yards. Now, is this going to match your rifle exactly? Usually, for me, it gets really close. But if it doesn't, you have an option here. So, what we'll do is we'll go back out the trajectory and we'll scroll here. We'll scroll back up to the muzzle velocity. Now, you just click. If you click on it, you can just change the muscle velocity. If you click over here, now you can show your impact data. So this is where a lot of people get confused, but I should be able to explain it pretty easily. First off, you want to tell it what you're measuring by. Today we're going to use inches, but honestly, I use MRAD. I look out there at what I've shot, I don't always have the opportunity to go down range, and I measure with my scope how far my drop is. And if, I'm, if it's off, I use that as a correction and I enter it in here. So, so to make it simple, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a couple of targets and I'll show you how to true your dope on here. So we have our bullet here. We have our, our 260 out. We're shooting 142 grain Sierra Match King at 2750 feet per second. We want to shoot 500 yards. So we calculate. We scroll down here to 500. 2.73 mils. 2.7 mils. So we dial 2.7 mils into our scope, and we're going to fire dead center here. Now don't worry about windage. I mean, of course you want to try and always compensate for windage, but when you're getting your dope, you just want to aim dead center. So you fire one, two, three shots, and then what you're going to do is you're going to look here, and you're going to see how far you are off from your zero. Now that's really close together right there. But let's just say that we're seeing the top two are two, you know, about a two inches high. We're gonna call it one inch. Obviously, your your rounds aren't gonna leave impacts that big. So now we want to shoot at 700 yards. So we go back to our we go back to ballistic AE. We look at the elevation, and it says 4.69 mils. 
So that's going to be 4.7 mils. Now in this time, if it takes you two hours to get out to 700 yards, you're taking a break or something, make sure you go back and you check your DA. If it's changed, your dope's going to change. You don't want to be making corrections based on old information. So we got 4.7. We dial it in. We aim dead center. One, two, three shots. Now here, it looks like we're one, two, three, four inches total. So I'd say about three and a half because you have one up that's a little higher. You got to also realize when you're shooting at distance like that, that you know your spread is going to be a little bit wider, which is usually while why I use my um, scope and use mills just to measure the difference. But if you want to really be precise, then you put some paper out there and you shoot at it and you measure those differences. For me personally, I really like to shoot out at five, seven, nine, and then a thousand yards. I really feel like that I get solid numbers and solid data that is backed up in the field across all ranges. So we go back to our solution. We have 900 yards and it says 7.03 so I'm just going to call it good at 7 mils. Now we're going to take our shots. Of course your spread is going to be a little bit more here so what you want to do is just average those three out. So we'll just call it 5 inches low. Now that we have some solid numbers let's go back to the truing program and input those and see what it gives us for muzzle velocity and let's also see how it changes our dope across the board. So we go back out of trajectory, or I'm sorry, back into the trajectory, which is the first screen that you'll usually see on Ballistic AE when you start it up. And we'll go into muzzle velocity. Now here's something else that's really great about this. Those distances I used were just simple distances to call out. But if you're someplace where you don't have solid 900, 800, 500 yard berms to deal with, and you're dealing with 983, 625, those numbers work perfect as well. It goes straight into here and and doesn't change a thing as far as truing your impact. It will chew it correctly. Our first target was 500 yards. I want to point out something real quick. It's down here. It's drop is relative. That means it's relative to what your impact should have been. If you want to shoot and you don't have the slightest idea what it should have been and so you reach out there and you shoot and you see that you're at your elevation is 2.3 mils, well then you can just turn this off then you can just turn this off and you can put 2.3 mils at 500 on this at 600 on this at 700 not inches obviously you want to do mils of your MOA and it'll also configure your muzzle velocity like that for you it's really a great program so here we go we're at 500 yards and we were actually one inch high if you're low you're going to want to put a negative sign there but we were high so at one inch high at 500 yards and the drop is relative because it's relative to the dope that we dial which is 2.7 mils. Next is 700 yards. We dialed 4 point mils up and ended up being 3.5 inches low. So here you negative 3.5 range 700. And we're going to come here to the next one. And now we're going to go 900. So now that we've put 700 in, we're going to move over here to 900. 900, we were 5 inches low after an elevation come up of 7 mils. Real simple. Just type it in here. 900. Okay, so I got three ranges in there that I made some corrections on. So I'll come down here and I'll hit correct velocity. It'll take a second. Okay, so now it kicked out 27, 24 feet per second. If you chronograph these lows, and they are not 27, 24 feet per second, but they are 5 inches low at 900 yards, and they are 3.5 inches low at 700 yards, and they are 1 inch high at 500 yards, the bullet is what you need to trust. The chronograph can give you some good numbers, but the bullet hits where the bullet hits. Don't take this number as this has to be the number that I'm going by. This is that that does not absolutely mean that that's your speed. That means the computer calculates that if you're hitting these areas, if you're hitting if you're impacting these areas, then we're going to use this as our calculation to give you your trajectory. So now we'll bring it back up and we'll, what I've done is I've changed it to 100 yard increments. 
So now as you can see here, we have, uh, have both windows up and we can see the differences in speeds. To the left here is our previous 2750 feet per second and here is our true dope of 2724 feet per second. And as you can see, when you get out to a thousand yards, it is almost two tenths of a mil difference. One of the main ways that I use this is when I'm taking old loads and comparing them to new loads. I already have a baseline muzzle velocity that I've gotten from this method and then I'm going to compare it to my new loads and see how they stack up. Okay, so what I'm out here doing today is I have uh, three rounds from the load that I tested last time and three rounds from a load that I've used before but I haven't loaded in a while. It's basically the same amount of powder just in different brass but they usually have about the same speeds. Uh, when I chronoed them, chronoed them last they were a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shoot them at 620 yards and see how they stack up next to each other. So my first shot was just off the right edge. I didn't hold any wind. There's really not a, w a lot of wind out here, but you know, right now it's okay for me to do cider shots because I'm just testing ammo. Okay, so that's from my confirmed group or from my confirmed ammo that I've shot out here at distance before. Now, if you'll see out there that target, you know, it's actually pretty decent sized um, if you're comparing it to things to uh, to see if there's different speeds in your ammo. So I'm going to try and aim at the bottom and then at the top and see where it hits. So that was shooting at the very bottom and it still hit. Sometimes I'll look around and see if there's something smaller that I could hit. I'll take a shot at the very top and see if it clears over it if I just hit it right at the bottom. I saw my impact. Uh, I'm dead on with this, which I have been before. So we'll just take one last one to confirm. No problem. It looks like, pretty much looks like it's right next to each other. So that's one way you can do it if you don't have time or you don't have a place where you can shoot out to a thousand yards. I know not everybody has a place where they can shoot out 600 yards, but for me this works really well. Um, just in a pinch, you know, I made this 100 rounds off of some Lapua brass that I had shot before. I've been shooting Nosler brass out of my 260, and so basically I just took them out there and shot them. It looks like my dope's going to be the same. Okay, I actually did find a slightly smaller target. It's, uh, this is half submerged in water there at the bank. That's it, 607 yards. Hopefully you can actually see the impact with the splash, but you can definitely hear it come back. See if we can hit that branch right in front of it. I don't think we did.
There's not a really a lot of recoil in these things either. That was free recoil, and that was 625 yards.